Thank you for joining us this evening. This will be our final virtual Wednesday night Bible study. We look forward to regathering on April the 14th. That's Wednesday after next. Next week is a family focus Wednesday night. We always do that around Easter time. So you enjoy your family next week, but we look forward to seeing you in the sanctuary 630 on April the 14th. But tonight we want to think about a very very interesting phrase that occurs in 1 Peter chapter 1, and it's simply this, things angels desire to look into. That's found in verse 12 of 1 Peter 1. And let me ask you this question. Have you ever had a matter of great interest or concern, and someone shares an insight with you, and you respond to them by saying, you know what, I really need to look into that. Uh, for instance, there's several things that are of great interest to me. Uh, uh, Money-saving tips. I mentioned last week, uh, anybody who's looking at the possibility of retirement in the next few years looks for ways to cut your monthly bills. But anytime somebody shares money-saving tips, I look into it. Health tips. Uh, I never dove deep into health issues in the past. But now, because of some of the concerns I have, if someone talks to me the way one of our young deacons did this last week, who's a cancer survivor and uh, knows that I'm, I'm facing uh, prostate cancer treatment sometime this year, anyhow, it's of great interest. I want to look into things that people like that share with me. Uh, this time of year, a lot of people like gardening as I do very, very much, and I'll meet people that have similar interests. There's a lady in our church uh, that lost one of her favorite Japanese maple trees, and she and I have been talking about our love for maple trees and where you can find that, and she's looking into finding a replacement for that tree. Building tips. I talk a lot with our senior pastor, Josh Phillips, because he's done a beautiful addition onto his home. So we talk about building all the time, and it's of great interest to, to me, and I look into things. He asks me questions, and I research it out. I like to look into things concerning building. But you, there are things of no interest to me that people share, and quite honestly, I don't look into it. Uh, cyber tips. A lot of people will mention this neat app that's available on the phone and all of these different kind of things. And that just sort of goes in one ear and out the other because that's just not in the area of my interest. Uh, sewing tips. My wife uh, was telling me about all the intricacies of a new pressure foot that she can get for her sewing machine. And she really wants to look into that because she can get it at a good discount right now. And I'm saying, Martha, you do... Uh, whatever you feel is right. But quite honestly, I'm not going to look into pressure foots for sewing machines. And finally, this will seem odd being a man, but I'm just really not into firearms. And a lot of people that I know love their firearms and they have all kinds of tips and ideas about firearms. And I think it's great. and think It's something that they need to look into, but it's something that's of no interest to me. Here's the principle. The depth to which we're willing to to look into something is largely determined by the value we place on that matter. When Peter says, even the angels desire or long to look into these things, he uses a term of great intensity. It pictures someone stooping over to look into something. It is not a quick glance. We at Gowansville enjoy uh, our announcement time every Sunday morning, and it's called the Gowansville Glance. And Kellen works hard with different individuals to produce announcements uh, that we might be informed about things going on in our church community. But I can venture a guess that if at the end of the service you were quizzed about what was announced and what were the details of each announcement, most of us probably couldn't score over 50%. It's why it's a glance. It's designed to be a glance. It's not looking into. But the term look into is not one of those quick glances. It's a calculated, close-up analysis that involves a deliberate gaze and a studied observation. In fact, this exact same term to look into 
is used in all three of the gospel, or in three of the four gospel accounts of the resurrection. Let me read one of those where Peter looked into the tomb on that resurrection Sunday morning. The Bible says in Luke 24, 12, But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping over, stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves. So the exact same word, to stoop over, to look into. And the Bible goes on to say, He departed marveling to himself at what had happened. Not only do you look into something of great interest because of the great value it represents, but you really contemplate what does that mean to me. The reason angels desire to look into our salvation is their clear understanding of the value God placed on saving us. When we regather on April the 14th, we'll look at the first 12 verses of 1 Peter 1 where it describes the incredible value of the salvation that you and I experience. But tonight, I want us to explore the subject of angels. I've done a lot of funerals in recent days, did one just last Tuesday. And one of the things I don't like to talk a lot about at funerals because so many people have a sentimental idea that when we die and go to heaven, we become angels. Well, that is just biblically and factually incorrect. You and I will never become an angel. But I do want to explore some of the similarities and some of the differences, the things that we have in common with angels and things that are very, very different. And just if that's a, a subject that interests you, uh, let me commend to you two books, one by David Jeremiah entitled Angels, one by Billy Graham entitled Angels. Both of them have very good cha chapters on this very subject. In fact, uh, I've been thinking about it, and uh, possibly when we first uh, finish First Peter, we may study one of these books together. I don't know about you, but the older I get and the more funerals I do, the more interested I am in angels. So, two simple truths that we want to look at tonight. Things we have in common with angels and how we are different from angels. First, let's consider the things that we have in common with angels. Angels are God's servants and so are we. When the Apostle John wanted to worship an angel in the book of the Revelation, the angel stopped him and said in Revelation 19.10, I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. And then again in Revelation 22.9, an angel said, I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book. Hebrews refers in Hebrews 1.14 to angels this way. They are ministering spirits sent forth to serve. The higher you go in God's plan, the more you will be called upon to serve. We look forward to that day when the Lord says to us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But God does not call us to some kind of heavenly retirement where all we do for eternity is golf or fish or whatever our, our dream idea of spending time might be. Revelation tells us in Revelation 22, 3, the throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and His servants will serve Him. So we were created for worship but we also worship Him through our service, and that's something that will not cease when we go to eternity, and that's something that we have in common with angels. I've heard someone say over and over again, we're never more like Christ than when we give, and that's a good statement. Listen to this statement. I haven't read it anywhere, but I, I believe it to be true. 
you are never more like an angel than when you are serving Christ. So that's a wonderful thing to have in common with angels. And I'd say this as I'm grateful for the wonderful visitors that God has sent our way in recent days. I pray for visitors, not only that they will answer the question, what does your church offer me and my family, but also, how can I serve? We talked much about this in our staff meeting this week, how important it is for families to get connected in our church. And I think one of the great ways to connect is through service. So angels are servants, and so are we. Angels are immortal, and so are we. Jesus said in Luke 20 and 36, in reference to those who are resurrected that they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. One of the great lies of the devil is that when you're dead, you're finished. That's absolutely not true. A large portion of the world, those that are communist, atheistic in their philosophy, believe that this life is all that there is. But that is absolutely not true. Those who die in Christ shall live eternally. Those who die outside of Christ will experience eternal punishment. Not annihilation, but eternal punishment. But uh, angels and we have that in common. Angels are servants, and so are we. Angels are immortal, and so are we. Angels have personalities, and so do we. Angels are made up, and we don't have time to go into all these texts tonight, but they're made up of an intellect, emotions, and a will, and that describes personality. So we too have that. But one of my favorite examples of a compassionate warrior angel is found in Daniel 10, verses 18 through 20. You know the story about a messenger sent to Daniel who was delayed 21 days in a spiritual battle and finally broke through with a message for Daniel. And this is what he said, this angel, to Daniel. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man, meaning an angel, touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. So I'm grateful that God assigns specific angels with specific personalities for specific tasks, and that's a reflection of the manifold grace of God. We talked last week and the week before about how the manifold, the many colored trials that we have are a perfect match for the manifold, many colored grace of God. And one of the ways God steps up in His grace in our life is sending us just the right angel for just the right challenge that we face. So we've seen some of the ways that we have things in common with angels. How do we differ from angels? Our text tonight accentuates how we are dramatically different from angels, and it is the thing that angels desire to look into. Angels do not know experientially the joy of being redeemed. Although angels rejoice in heaven when we are saved and they glorify God who saved us. They cannot testify personally of something that they have not experienced. Now, it's important to note that there are good angels who have never ceased to fulfill God's purpose for which they were created. There are bad angels who fell with Lucifer and they make up the body of what we call demons in the Bible. And they are accomplishing not the will of our Heavenly Father, but their father, the devil. 
But there are no, and I emphasize this again, there are no redeemed angels. Secondly, angels have greater knowledge than humans. In 2 Samuel 14, 20, the Bible says, My Lord is wise according to the wisdom of angels. But even though they are wiser than us, even though they know more than they know, their knowledge is limited. They are not omniscient. Concerning the second coming, Christ said in Mark 13, 32, But of that day and that hour no man know not the angels which are in heaven know. But even though angels know more than we do, they do not have experiential knowledge of salvation. So why then do they rejoice every time a sinner is saved? Primarily because they know that every person who is saved brings glory to God. But secondarily, they were ministering spirits who help carry out God's providence that we might be saved. I literally, I literally believe that the enemy sends his demons to try to kill us before we can respond to the gospel. In fact, we've heard recent testimonies of people who've been saved in response to a lack of peace at really when their life was uh, on, the, on the verge of moving into eternity with the coronavirus and double pneumonia. But God preserved their life. And eternity will reveal what, what kind of battle went on around that bedside. Well, you and I were not allowed in the ICU this year for COVID patients, but you can rest assured that the enemies of hell have been in those rooms uh, desiring to take people out before they can be saved, and there are also God's ministering spirits who serve Him were there to battle that you might live in order that you might respond to the gospel. So together with the angels, we will worship the Lord who is worthy. But you and I are the only ones who can sing the song of the redeemed. I'm going to close as I do every week with a, a song that I enjoy. And typically, they're old favorites that I love. But I was introdu introduced by David Jeremiah and Billy Graham to a song I've never heard of before. It's an old song. In fact, they both say that they used to sing it in crusades. And... I, I love the content because it goes right along with the teaching that we've discussed tonight. But the title of the song is, Holy, Holy, Holy is what the angels sing. And listen intently. It's four minutes long, but listen intently and read the words and think about them. Gaze into this thought as it's sung by the fountain of... Academy Choir from British Columbia. God bless you. There is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. Where the angels sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne. Their sweet hearts are ever cheerful and their voices always clear. Oh, that we might be more like them while we serve the Master here. Holy, holy is what the angels sing, and I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fall their Tribulation.
stand and listen for they cannot join that song like the sound of many waters by that happy blood washed throng for they sing about great trials battles fought and victories won and they praise their great redeemer who hath said to them well done so although i'm not an angel yet i know that over there i will join a blessed chorus that the angels cannot share i will sing about my savior who upon dark So 